Great. So welcome to our class this morning, Intermediate Flow. And our theme this week is about releasing what no longer serves us. And I've already had a day of having to let go of quite a, quite a lot of stress that's come up through teaching and uh, what's going on around here. So um, I've been working on practicing my own lessons today. And I think that uh, we can always use that lesson of releasing what no longer serves us, right? So for, you know, whether it's an emotional releasing, when those challenging feelings come up, it doesn't mean we deny them. It doesn't mean that we, you know, try to cut ourselves off or numb ourselves from challenging feelings. We feel them and then we don't dwell on them, right? So I can, I could feel my stress. I could feel my tension when things were starting to fall apart in the last class, but the job is to let go, right? To feel it, to deal with the situation and to not carry that stress forward. So I had about three minutes of cleansing breaths in between to, um, to, to come back to my center and to let that go. Right? So no, whatever no longer serves us, if we hold on to it, it starts to work against us, right? And then the theme is inspired by the late September beauty of the leaves outside and having just returned from leading a four day retreat uh, near Algonquin Park where the colors were just spectacular. And uh, the leaves were just gently falling sometimes while I was teaching yoga outside and we'd feel these leaves on us uh, coming down. And, and just that idea that the leaves don't hold on. When fall comes and it's time, they let go. And those leaves become compost for whatever is uh, to come next. And when the leaves, when the tree lets go of the leaves, it creates the conditions for it to go inward, right? For its hibernation in the winter, and then for it to grow and bud and to bring forth new life. So when we hold on to what's no longer serving us, we cut ourselves off from that possibility of opening to what may be even more beautiful and bountiful, like the spring. So we're going to practice today um, in such a way that focuses on that idea of letting go of softening and whatever comes into the mind, we can exhale and, and feel a sense of it sort of shedding away like the leaves from a tree. So let's come to our mat. And coming into mountain posture to begin with. Take a moment to tune into and settle into your own breath. Have a sense of dropping down into your heels, lifting through your thighs, dropping through your shoulders, and lifting through the crown of your head. So like a tree, we have roots that go into the earth, imaginary roots. And if you imagine from about your navel down that you're lower half is sinking into the earth as roots. And like a tree, we grow in two directions. I mean, we literally grow in one direction, but we, we grow, we can think about grounding down from the navel and lifting up from the trunk. And if you've followed any of Vonda Scaravelli's beautiful work and writing, she talks a lot about this idea of rebounding energy when we really let our roots go down, just like a tree, the deeper the roots are, the more lifted and strong and sturdy and supported the trunk of the tree becomes. And then the words are, are not accidental, the trunk of our body corresponding to the trunk of the tree, the crown of our head corresponding to the crown of the tree. Let's bring the palms together at the heart. And if there's just something in your life that you'd like to release that's no longer serving you, you could bring that into your mind. So that may be, you know, as simple as 
old clothing that no longer fits or no longer suits you. Or it could be some deep psychological trait that you've been carrying that's no longer serving you that you'd like to let go of or anything in between. Just take a moment to contemplate what is it that you would like to release? And then when it feels right for you, you can imagine lifting whatever that is, lifting it up as you breathe in, and then exhale, and letting it go like the leaves of the trees falling to the earth to decompose. You'll come back to reconnect at the heart. What is it that's no longer serving you, that you'd like to let go to become compost? To make space for something new, something that serves you better. And then lift that again. Breathing in and exhale. Let it go. Again, bringing the hands to the heart. And one more time, connecting with that which you'd like to release. We're not going to dwell on what we don't want. But bringing it to mind so that we can in have the intention of releasing it back out into the world. Inhaling, lifting. Exhaling like those leaves slowly falling to the earth where they become compost for what can arise and grow. And hands back to the heart. This time we'll add a forward bend, so we'll lift up. And as we release, Big circle with the arms coming forward. Any amount, let your head release. And then inhale, lifting. Bringing the palms together, exhale, bringing the hands back to the heart. And again, we'll inhale, lifting. Exhale, releasing, bending forward, letting the head release. Inhale, lifting. And as always, please follow your own breath. Hands back to the heart. And again, reaching up. You can even imagine as you bring the arms down that those leaves are falling all around you in their beauty. Feeding a carpet around you as you let go and release. And bring the hands back to the heart. And then this time, as we come into the forward bend, you can choose to stay there if it feels good. So you'll come up, you'll come forward, the hands can come to the thighs or reach further down or dangle. You can cross your arms if you prefer, soften your knees. And stay here a few breaths. And then let's come all the way up, breathing in. And then like we're gathering that new energy, bringing it back to the heart, pausing here. And then releasing to let go. And we'll move into, um, into warrior starting near the front of the mat. Coming up with a breath in again. We're lifting the heart and then exhale, bending the knees and softening forward. Let your head release. Pause here for a couple of breaths. And we'll take the right foot, step it back, turning it toes to the right so your whole foot is on the ground. And we'll inhale and lift in warrior one. The knee softens so it's bent over the ankle. And we'll move here very gently, straightening the leg, bringing the arms down, pressing into the ground and lifting through your trunk. Bend the knee, the heart lifting as the arms lift, and then exhale back, straighter front leg, arms down. 
We can add the forward bend this time, reaching out long spine. Let your head stay between your arms as you come down and head releasing. And then lifting head between the arms, long spine as you lift. You can coordinate to exhale as you go forward. Inhale as you lift. Move the front leg straighter as you go forward if you find that that's a good stretch for you or keep it bent. Good. Coming back up to warrior one, draw down with the shoulders, draw slightly in with the abdomen. Pressing that back hip forward a little bit. Lift in the heart. And then we'll lower the hands back down. Walk the hands forward. Lift the back leg. Rotate internally with the back hips. Your toes are pointing toward the ground. Lift the heart. And then we'll lower that leg. Soften both knees. Let your body drape over your legs for a moment. And we'll inhale and lift. And exhale, hands to the heart. Pause here. We'll go to the other side, breathing in, lifting up. Exhale, big circle. Stepping back with the other foot, turning the toes to the side. We'll inhale and lift up and find our alignment in warrior one. So belly draws back a little, back hip pressing forward just a bit. Heart lifting, shoulders relaxed. And then we'll straighten the leg as we bring the arm down. Inhale. Adding the forward bend. Again, you can move the front leg straighter as you come forward or keep it bent. If you want to work harder, keeping the head between the arms, lifting with a long spine. Reaching out and lowering the same way. Okay, coming forward. Walk the hands forward to lift the back leg. Internally rotate the back legs at the hips so the toes point down. Maybe lift the heart a little. You keep the standing leg bent as much as you need to. It's quite a stretch. And then lower that leg. Release the head down toward the ground. Take a couple of breaths here. And we'll lift all the way up, breathing in. And exhale, float forward again. You can repeat that movement a few times, lifting and coming forward. Okay, coming into a forward bend. Bring the hands down and we'll step the feet back to come to downward dog. Finding your downward dog and walking on the spot. And then we'll lower both knees to the mat. And move from all fours with a breath in, lifting the heart, lifting the tail. Exhaling to child's pose. Back and forth like that, going at your own pace. If you're coordinating your breath, exhale as you go back and inhale as you come forward. Okay, 
If you like, you can rest for a few breaths in child's pose. If you want to bring the hands onto the head, you're welcome. Otherwise, resting the head on the ground and maybe rock the hips a little side to side. And then when you're ready, coming back upright. So bring the hands forward. Now you can either swing the legs around to come to sit or you can cross your ankles behind you and sit back over your feet. So either way, you're gonna to come to a seated position. So support the hands behind, legs wide, feet, knees bent, feet on the floor and moving the knees side to side. Getting a little more movement into the hips. If it feels like a strain as you go away from the one shoulder, you can lift that arm and let the body twist a little bit. So you're not straining that back shoulder. And then let's come back to the center. You can take the legs and bring them out in front and move them a little straighter. And take your body and sit back a little further so that you can take one ankle and place it over the opposite knee. And then walking the foot on the floor, perhaps a little closer to you, walking your hands in and lifting up with the heart, breathing in. And then as you exhale, you can round a little and then inhale. So a little cat cow movement of the spine to invite a little more stretch and then release that stretch. Invite a little more as you inhale and lift, and then release. You can either stay with the movement or you can lift up and stay with the stretch. If you like, you could even reach under and hold the knee if that's available to you. To feel that stretch in the outer hip of the lifted leg. For most people, some will feel it also in the inner thigh or the hamstrings. It really it depends where you Hold your tightness, your tension. Okay, let's stretch the leg out and we'll bring the foot down to the ground just on the outside of the leg and bring the hands around the knee and lift up tall. And then whichever knee is up, you're gonna keep the opposite hand on the knee. So it's my right knee, my left arm. And then other arm lifts up. Big breath in and you're gonna to turn towards the knee that's lifted. You could wrap your arm around if you like or bring the elbow to the outside of the knee. Keeping a nice gentle twist as you turn to look over your shoulder, breathing in, lifting tall. All right, and then releasing to come around to the front. You can bring the foot over and bend the other knee. And then we'll walk the feet a little further away, lean back on the hands again, and we'll take the other leg and lift it. And then you can play around with how close you bring your body towards your legs, how close you bring your legs towards your body to find a, a nice easeful stretch in the outer hip or wherever you feel it on the lifted leg. And we can inhale and find a little arch, exhale and round. Inhale arching or lifting, you may not actually arch the back, but you're looking for more um, upright spine and then rounding back. And you probably feel how the stretch shifts a little bit, changes as you do this movement. And then see if you can find a place that feels like just the right amount of stretch for you, not too much, not too little. Again, you can keep your hands behind you for support, or you might reach your hands around, around, bring them around the knee, lifting up with that little bit of leverage and support. And then as you're ready, you'll release, straighten the leg that's on the ground and bring the foot down to the floor on the outside of your leg. And then hands come up around the knee 
to lift and lengthen your spine. So again, opposite hand to knee. Other arm lift to really lengthen the spine. Big breath in as you exhale, bring the hand behind your back to the ground and use the hand on your knee to just simply hold you here, not to, to force your body into a deeper twist, but to simply hold yourself here. You could wrap the arm around or bring the elbow to the outside, whatever's comfortable for you. And one more breath here. And then you'll turn back around to the front, uncross. And then again, to come back to all fours, you can either swing your legs around or cross your ankles, roll over onto your knees, bring your hands down, and come back to that cat cow, breathing in as you arch. And you can either just round your back or round and go to child's pose on your exhale. Finding a little more movement after the twist, releasing. Going at your own pace. And then we'll come back up to all fours, tucking your toes under, lift the hips up. And you can again walk on the spot and down with dog, finding some movement into the calves, ankles. And then we're going to lift the left leg, stretching it back. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, swing that leg through between your hands or whatever it takes to get there. You can lower the back knee. If you need extra padding, sometimes just rolling your mat, folding it over is enough, or you can use a blanket to pad your knee. My, my, my mat is very thick, so it's okay for me here. So we'll rock back. When you rock back, try to keep your hip over your knee. If you want more stretch in the front leg, walk that foot forward to move that leg straighter. And then as we come forward, we want to keep the knee over the ankle or behind the ankle. So not, you know, here, this kind of position. So the foot a little further forward maybe than you might think, rocking forward. Rocking back, you can bring the head down and then lift the heart. And then as you come forward into lunge, you might want to bring that foot back if you've walked it uh, way ahead of your knee. Tuck your back toes under, lift the back knee. And then think about taking that whole back leg and pulling it forward as you take the front leg and draw it back. From here, we'll step back to downward dog. And then from downward dog, taking the right leg, stretching it back, take a breath in. As you exhale, step forward. And again, lower the back knee. So you may need to do some fancy footwork to get that leg forward, that's fine. And then you'll shift back. You're going to keep the hip over the knee. So you don't want to go way back, which puts strain on the knee. If you want more stretch for the front leg, you'll just wiggle that front foot forward. And then we'll rock back and forth a few times. Good. And then again, when we come to lunge, you might want to bring that foot back just a little bit so knee and ankle line up. And then tucking the back toes under, lifting up. And again, drawing the back leg forward and forward leg back to sort of square the hips and create engagement through the thighs. And then we're going to step forward. Let the head release, soften your knees. Take a hold of opposite elbows and let your body hang here. If it feels more comfortable to bring your elbows up onto your thighs, that's another option here as well.
Releasing the arms to the side, come all the way up. Reaching overhead and then back to the heart. And taking a few breaths here. And then we'll move into a sun salutation. Inhale, lifting. Exhale like the leaves of the tree falling to the ground. Let your body bow forward. And then lift the heart, hands to shins, breathing in, lengthening the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Take the right leg, step back into lunge. Again, square the hips here. So back hip comes forward, forward hip comes back. You could optionally choose to lift the hands to the knee or overhead for a breath. And then exhaling, bring your hands down if you've lifted them and step back to plank pose. So find that flat line in the back of the body from the head to the feet. And then for this first one, you can lower the knees for all of them. You can lower the knees. Some of you may choose a more challenging option after. I'm going to bend the elbows and let the body melt down from the thighs to the belly chest, forehead. You can point the toes behind you. Press down into the hips and thighs. Squeeze gently through the legs and hips. And then inhale, lift the chest and head. And then exhale, come to all fours. And shift the hips back to child's pose. Take a breath here. I think I lost my audio. Just walk the complications today. So hopefully you can hear me uh, from the speaker there, or the microphone there. Coming back up to all fours. Tuck your toes under and lift the down the dog. From your downward dog. You step forward with the right foot. Again, squaring the hips and option to lift. And maybe lift up. And your hands down, step forward. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthening. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, all the way up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. And pause here, letting your breath settle. We'll take a breath in and lift up, coming a little closer to the computer so you can hear me. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to chins, lengthening. Exhale, fold forward. And then you'll step back with the left foot. Again, you might lift all the way up with the breath in. And come forward with an exhale. And then stepping back to your plank. So you have the option now to move down as you did before, with the knees down and then rolling into the ground. Or you might bend the elbows and slowly come down in plank. You point your toes, moving down to the thighs and hips. Inhale, lift your chest and head. And then exhale, press into the palms, and move back to child's pose. Take a couple of breaths here. And 
So you're coming up to our fourth. Exhale, downward dog. And the left foot steps forward. Option to lift. Then lower. And then stepping forward. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, release. Inhale, look all the way up. Exhale, back to the heart. Let's take a couple of breaths here. Take the arms to the sides. Take a breath in. Exhale, crossing the arms over the chest. Lower the elbows, let them relax, let the head come down. We can rock a little side to side with the head down, elbows moving. And then back to the center. Notice which arm is on top. We'll open. And then exhale to we'll go the other way. So head down, side to side. And then back to the center, opening the arms, bringing the hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, and lift the heart. Take a few breaths here. And then release. Lift and roll the shoulders. And then we'll work with the half squat pose. So Arda Utkatasana is the Sanskrit name. We're taking a breath in, reach up. Then we'll come forward, bending the knees into the half squat. Inhale to lift. Exhale, half squat. Then And we'll stay this time. So as you come down, staying there. Let's lift the arms, either out in front or to the sides. Shift your weight to one foot. And bring your other leg over. You can touch your toes down if you need help with balance. Or if it's available, you can touch your toes behind. And then the arms over, so whichever leg is on top, the other arm crosses over. And you can stay here or come into the eagle arms, bringing the backs of the hands together and reaching the bottom hand around the thumb side of the upper hand. Release, lifting the knee, lifting the arm. Come down. Give it a shake. Reaching up with the breath in. And back to half squat. And raise the arms to the front of the side. This side is probably easier for where we're going. Shifting your weight to the other foot, lifting, coming up and over. And then whichever leg is on top, the opposite arm comes on top. You can either stay there or come into eagle arms. Standing with your bed, so we're not up here, we're sinking down. And then lifting, and release. Take your feet apart, hands to your hips, and we'll do some circles.
in one direction a few times and then the other direction. Coming back to the center. Mm -hmm. Release the hands to your sides. Come back to mountain pose and that intention of dropping down through your roots, lifting up through your trunk, and finding some opening through the crown. So as if the crown of your head opens toward the sky. Let's take a breath in and reach up. We'll come back to the half squat. Again, you can take your arms to the side and we're going to shift the weight to one foot and this time crossing the ankle over the opposite knee. Pause in here. If you want, you can take hold of the ankle, invite it to move up a little higher on the thigh if that's comfortable for you to come back into the pose. So if your leg is straight, that leg is just going to fall off. You need to keep enough bend to keep the ankle there. Let's lift, lift the knee, and breathe. Other side, you can up with the breath in. Exhale, half squat. Take the arms to the side. Shift your weight, bring your ankle over the thigh. Again, you might invite it a little higher as you sit down and breathe here. And then lifting and release. And again, take a feet a little wider. Hands to the hips, soften your knees and do a few more circles. One way, the other way. Maybe even making a figure eight with your hips. Exploring some movement here. And then coming back to the center, back to mountain pose. Let your breath settle. Feel the strength of your roots, your legs, moving down into the earth. Bring your hands back together at your heart. Inhale and lift. Again, releasing that gesture. Arms coming to the sides, come back to your heart. You can reconnect with what you'd like to release in life. And lift that, honor that, and then release it as your arms come down. And some more hands to the heart, connecting with that, which you want to release, lifting it. And letting it go. We're taking a few more breaths here in mountain falls. I'm just going to move the computer, hopefully, so we can still have sound and I move to the ground. So from our mountain pose, taking your breath in, lifting up. Exhale, come forward. Soften your knee, let your head hang down. If you like, you can cross your arms. Or bring your elbows to your thighs. You 
bringing the fingertips to the ground. Other the hands to the ground, whichever you can reach. You can step back to downward dog. If you want the hands flat to downward dog, you can walk and walk here. And then lower your knees down. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the tail, exhale, high pose. Again, lengthening on your inhale, rounding on your exhale. Child's foot is comfortable, stay for a few breaths, otherwise, you might just keep moving forward and back as you work. And then we're going to move into the kneeling sun salutation sequence and eventually move into pigeon pose. So just so we don't have to interrupt the flow when we get there, I'll demonstrate pigeon pose and you can get, if you have, if you need props, you could get them in preparation. So for pigeon pose, we'll be coming at it from downward dog and you can watch for a second. We'll move too slow to get there. But from down the dog, we're going to take one knee to the wrist on the same side. And then you'll wiggle your foot towards the other side and stretch the back leg down. Now, if I show you on the other side, you'll see that there's a bit of space between my hip and the ground. So I'm going to take my blanket. And rather than twisting my body to bring the hip down, I'm going to take my blanket and I'm going to fill that space so that my hips can be relatively square. And that's pigeon pose. So, if you feel like you need a blanket or a pillow and you've got something handy, it could even be a yoga block to fit under that space. So have whatever you need handy. And come to a kneeling position near, near the back of the mat now. If sitting on your heels um, all the way down is uncomfortable, you can start this sequence from high kneeling. So whatever works for you, we'll lift up with the breath in. Exhale to come to child's pose. Inhale to lift all four. Exhale to downward dog. Pause here for a couple of breaths. And bend your knees to really lengthen through the arms and the thighs. And then we'll lower the knees. Lift the heart, lift the tail. Exhale with the child's pose. Inhale, find kneeling, and then exhale back to wherever you started, so high or low kneeling. So this time we'll move from, when we get to downward dog, we'll move into pigeon. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, coming forward, pile through. Inhale, all four. Exhale, downward dog. Taking one leg, bending the knee to bring the knee onto the ground by the wrist. You then wiggle the foot over towards the other side and stretch back with the back leg. If you need it, rather than twisting, you're going to fill the space under that hip. And then Lower down, maybe onto the elbow. If you find this pose is, is intense, and it can be, if it becomes too much, you're just going to come back to child's pose and rest there. If you want to go into the resting pigeon or the climbing pigeon, you let my head come to the hand or onto your neck. Mm 
So take your time here. You might feel in the, in the back here or the hip of the bent knee. You might feel some stretch there. Again, if it's too much, come back to child's pose. If it helps, you might imagine your breath going into that tight area as you inhale. And as you exhale, you're releasing, softening, letting go, whatever tension you don't need in this pose. When you're ready, you lift up onto your hands again. When you lift up, and you're going to draw the shoulders back, chest forward. And then you'll tuck under the back toes and lift the back knee and come back to down the dog. Lower the knees, come into all fours. Lifting the head and tail, exhale, pile pose. Inhale, high kneeling, and exhale back to where you started. And then we'll go through that sequence again to end up in prison on the other side. Inhale into lift. Exhaling, come forward. Inhaling all four. Exhale. Downward drop. When you're ready, other knee comes up toward the wrist. You will wiggle the foot towards the opposite direction and slide back with the back leg. You can take whatever you've got handy to bring some padding under that hip. And then make your way Forward, either onto your forearms, onto your forehead, on your hands, or onto the ground. Defining the expression of this pose is most comfortable for you. And again, if it feels like too much, you just go back to child pose. Often one hip feels tighter than the other. Same thing here, breathing into where you feel the tightness. And then exhaling to soften and release. Take your time within your legs and lift back up onto the hands. Then shoulders back, press forward. Make a couple of breaths here. And then as you're ready, you tuck your back toes under, lift the knee, and come back to down the dog. Come down the dog, rolling your knees to the mat. Lifting the chest with the head. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, high knee. And then exhale, again, back to where you started. From here, lifting up with the breath in. Exhale, come to child's pose. And then pause here. In child pose. You rock a little side to side if that feels good. If it would feel better to keep moving, either all fours to child pose or bringing down your dog again if that feels right for you. Take some time either breathing, exploring your breath in child pose, or exploring some movement here to feel with your body. When you feel ready, you can come back up to all fours or down to all fours, depending where you work. And again, 
Cross your ankle. Put back over your heels. And then we'll come to lie down. So you adjust yourself as you move on your mat. When you come to lie down, knees bent, hands resting on your body. Tuning into your breath. You want to close your eyes. Just get a movement downward into the lower back as you exhale through your shoulders, bottom. And letting the arms come away from the body to the side. Then move into the depth of twist. So as you exhale, your knees can go one direction while your head goes the other way. And then inhale, center, and exhale to switch side. You continue at your own pace. And if your body enjoys the twist and you want to stay a little longer, you can let the knees come to one side and maybe deepen the twist by bringing the upper leg further across the body. And if you want less twist, you'll do the opposite. You'll lift the top leg and move toward the chin. Either position or you can keep moving side to side. And as you stay on one side for a few breaths, you can take it over to the other side and explore what would feel good there. Whenever you feel complete, you can twist your ring yourself back to center. Lift your hips and bring your spine back to what feels like an aligned position. And then knees in towards your chest with one hand on each knee, moving into Ahanasana, knees come towards you as you exhale, knees move away from you as you inhale. As your knees come in this time, you'll separate the knees and circle them away from you, bring them back together, wrap them up, circle them around, come back in. And the knees to the chest, you stretch the legs towards the ceiling. Arms um, reach behind you toward the floor. Bend your elbows and move to the side with that better for your shoulders. And then back in your body. Coordinating your breath if you like. Inhale as you expand and extend. Exhale as you compress and draw in. Continuing at your own rate. And then the hugging the knees in, you can either rock side to side while holding the knees, or if you like, you can come into happy baby pose, which is your ankles or the outer edges of your feet, and rocking side to side from the And 
As you come back to the center, releasing the feet to the floor, stretch your legs up, stretch your arms up over your head, roll along from fingertips to heel, take a few breaths here. And then gradually lower your arms to your side. You can let your feet fall away from each other. Or if you prefer, you can bend your knees and let your knees fall together with the feet wide in the hip. We prepare for Shavasana. If you prefer to sit for the end of the class for the relaxation, you're welcome to sit. Then you can stay lying down. And if there's any other movement that your body is wanting before you come to stillness, then go ahead and take a moment to either further settle or do whatever movement is required to allow you to settle. Taking your time to make whatever little adjustments you need to be as comfortable as possible. And then letting your body sink down. Back to your breath. As you exhale, feel yourself letting go of tension in your body. Let each exhalation drop you down. Feeling yourself letting go the muscles of your neck, your jaw, and your face. Releasing tension all around your face, head, neck. Dropping down to the shoulders. Relaxing and releasing your arms. Let your hands especially release. There's nothing that you need to do right now. Knowing you need to go. Your hands could relax even more. Let the breath simply come to you with no effort, with the breath, no striving, no holding. As you exhale, feel your upper back soften a little in the area around your heart, soften. Exhale, and let your belly relax, drop down to the pelvis. Exhale, releasing, relaxing through the thighs, down into the knees. Abs and ankles, letting go. Soften your feet. There's no way you need to be right now, but right here. Let your feet go. And with each exhalation, letting go a little more, wherever you may notice that you're still holding. Release that tension which no longer serves you. Where do you hold in your body most typically? Then you bring a little more ease there as you bring your pocket tension to letting go of your routine.
Our exhale allows us to release and let go. Our inhale invites what's new, what's fresh, what's invited in with the breath. So as you set the class, visualizing what you want to release, you might now also have the intention of whatever gifts want to come to fill that space, allow yourself to be open whatever gifts may come your way. When we make space in our lives, you never know what's going to come to fill that space. You might have ideas or intentions. Breathing the breath now, inviting whatever gifts flow to you. Gradually, as you take in your breath, add a little movement, maybe wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch up with your arms, lower your head, lowering a bit of mental movement. And as always, if you want to spend a bit more time relaxing, feel free. You can turn off the recording or ignore me here in the live class. And otherwise, if you're ready to come upright, you'll go for two, five, pause there. Slowly. In your own time, if you're ready to back up front. Okay. You can come sit and you bring your palms together. Take the palms, turn them down, back to the hands come together, roll the fingertips in, and offer out like you're releasing what no longer serves you, leaving space to invite in by bringing the hands back to the hands together, fingertips down, around, and coming back to the heart, refreshed, energized, and ready to receive whatever gift. Life has to offer. Namaste.